Let's talk about how we can break down this big rational expression into a couple smaller ones. Let's talk about the detail first. We have to check the degree first. The degree on the top is just x to the second power, which is 2. The degree on the denominator is going to be 3 because here I have x to the first, and then if you multiply this out, you are going to get x to the second, and then x times x to the second power is x to the third power. That's good, because this method only works if the degree on the top is less than the degree on the bottom. If you have the degree on the top, it's bigger than or equal to the degree on the bottom, we have to do long division first. Anyways, now let's look at the denominators. Here we have x minus 2, which is a linear factor. And then here we also have a linear factor, x minus 2. But then this one is repeated twice. So now this is the setup. I'm going to write down sum number a over the first denominator, which is just x minus 3. Nothing tricky on that. But then for any repeated factor on the denominator, what you have to do is, you have to make sure all the power is present. So the second part, I'm going to write down sum number b over x minus 2 to the first power. Okay, I'm not going to write down the second power right away, because all the power has to be present. And then the third part is going to be c over x minus 2 to the, third, uh, to the second power, which is that. And then we can stop. This right here will be the setup. And you can also imagine, if this is x minus 2 to the fourth power, what do we have to do? we will have to have x minus 2 to the first, to the second, to the third, to the fourth, okay? All the power has to be present if you have a repeated factor. And now let's talk about how we can solve for a, b, and c, because if we can do that, we will be done. That will be nice. But then we don't like fractions, right? So what we can do is let's look at this equation and multiply everything by the lowest common denominator, which is just the original denominator, which we are going to multiply by x minus 3 times x minus 2 to the second power. Of course, we take this, distribute into all the terms, and then for the first one, we are just going to get x, uh, x squared plus 1 left. And then for the second one, the x minus 3 will cancel, so we have a times x minus 2 to the second power. For this one, one of the x minus 2 will be cancelled, so we have b times x minus 3 times 1 of the x minus 2. And for the last one, we have c, and then the x minus 2 squared will cancel each other out, so we have c times x minus 3. And this is going to be a polynomial in terms of x, and we just are trying to find out a, b, and c. And now let's talk about how we can do this in a smart way. We are going to pick some smart value for the x, and then this way, we are going to make our life really easy. Let's see how we can find out the smart numbers. You have seen that already. I have 3, 2, and 0. But then, this is how we find the smart, the smart number. Look back to the original denominator, which we have x minus 3 and then x minus 2. Think about how you can make them 0. This factor is 0 if x is equal to 3. That's how we are going to get it. Okay? And then, after you multiply this fraction, right, this equation, which is in terms of fractions, by the lowest common denominator, the second equation, it's a polynomial. Work with this. They're equivalent, okay? They're equivalent in the sense that this a, the a that you get right here, will be that a that you want, okay? Okay, so let's see if I pick x is equal to 3. And what I, what I need to do is plugging x equal to 3 into all the x that I see right here, okay? So let's do it. 3 squared plus 1 equals to plugging 3 right here. So we have a times 3 minus 2 to the second power plus b times 3 minus 3 and then 3 minus 2, plus c times 3 minus 3. You see why x is equal to 3 is such a nice number, such a smart number, I would say? Because look at the middle term. We do have x minus 3 as a factor, so when x is equal to 3, the middle term right here is going to be 0. Likewise, for the last one, we have c times x minus 3. The moment that x is equal to 3, this will also be 0. So what are we trying to say? Work this, if you work this out, 3 squared plus 1 is 10. If you work this out, you get a times 1 squared, which is just 1. This will be 0. That will be 0. In another word, we know a has to be equal to 10. Right? a times 1 is equal to 10. So a is equal to 10. Done. So we are one third done. <laughs> now, we use x is equal to 3. Let's pick x is equal to 2. It will be a similar fashion. Plugging 2 into all these x right here. So we have 2 squared plus 1. Okay? And you see this right here, we have a times x minus 2 to the second power. The moment x is equal to 2, this factor will be 0, right? The middle term, we have x minus 2, but the moment x is equal to 2, this right here will be 0 as well. The last factor doesn't have x minus 2, so that when you plug in 2 into x right here, we get c times 2 minus 3, 
So altogether, this equation turns out to be right, 2 squared plus 1, which is 5, is equal to 0, right? Plus 0, because this factor. And then 2 minus 3, which is negative 1. In another word, negative c is equal to 5. So that means what? c has to be negative 5. We are two thirds done. However, we don't have like a smart number anymore because we have the 3. We used the 3 already, and we used the 2 already. Now what? Now we pick easy number. Is x equal to 0 easy enough or not? Hopefully, will, that will help us out. It will, OK? But then if it doesn't help us out, well, maybe 0 happens to be one of the small numbers, then you can pick something else. Maybe you can pick x is equal to 1, negative 1. I think this way is more computational. It's easier compared to solve like a 3 by 3 system of equations. OK, so plugging x equal to 0, I hope 0 is easy enough. Everybody should be convinced with that. Plugging 0 into all these x, and here we get 0 squared plus 1, OK? It's equal to, by the way, now we know a is equal to 10, right? So let's not put on a anymore. Let's put on 10 for a, OK? So we have 10 times x is 0, and then we have minus 2, and we still have that square, OK? The second part, we still don't know what b is, so I really have to put on the b. But x is equal to 0, so we have 0 minus 2 right here. And then x is equal to 0, so we have 0 minus 2 right here. The third part, we have plus c, but c is equal to negative 5. So we know that this part, I can plug in negative 5 into c. In another word, plus negative 5 times, OK, x is equal to 0, minus 3. This is just a linear equation, right? We can work this out. So 0 squared plus 1 is 1. 10 times negative 2 squared, this is going to be 40. And the second part, this is going to be negative 3 times negative 2, which is 6, 6 times b. So we have plus 6b. The last part is going to be negative 5 times negative 3, which is positive 15. And of course, if you add these two up together, this is going to be 55. Subtract 55 on both sides, we see we have negative 54 is equal to 6b. Divide both sides by 6, we get b is equal to negative 9. So now what? We solve for a, b, and c, and we are done. So we can just come back here, and we know that a is equal to 10, and then b is equal to negative 9, and then c is equal to negative 5. And this is it. This is how you do partial fractions. One of the special case, and if you check on my next video, I'm going to talk about how we can do this kind of computations without writing down all this work. That's called a cover up. So check it out. And your subscription, it's my motivation to do more videos for you guys. Okay.